survived our time in the jungle but now it's time to move on so we are um, just jumped in our car with our driver and we are going to Lake Toba uh, Lake Toba is uh, further down the island so we've got five hours to Madan and then another four hours to Lake Toba so oh, just, nine hours. just a nine hour car ride Providing the roads are okay, because we did have a torrential downpour, and the river is in flood, and the roads, mm, just not too sure. They even moved people to the bottom cabins last night, because they're worried about the river coming up. Flooding, flooding, so we'll see, we'll see what the roads are like, but yeah, it's only nine hours, what could go wrong? <laughs> with a bit of a hold up. What's happened do you think, Scott? Well, it looks like the truck's lost its wheel bearing or something in a wheel on a tight corner beside the river and no one can get through so we've got a bit of a traffic jam. But no worries. No worries, no stress. But the river has really eroded the road away and it's just sort of like overhanging. We've just completed a marathon, nine and a half, ten hours in a car from Tankakan, Tankakan to um, where are we? Parapet at the moment, and we are on the boat to go over to the island where we're staying, hopefully for four nights. So um, it's about a half hour ferry trip and um, we're all good to go. So our private car did cost us a little bit more of course than if we went by bus but it would have been two buses with a wait in between so that maybe would have extended it out to about 12 hour plus trip. So um, that cost us one and a half million ringgit. Rupia. Rupia. I'm in the wrong country. Yep. <laughs> Rupiah, Indonesian Rupiah, that's right, I'm in Indonesia. And our ferry has cost us 15,000 Rupiah. 15, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's all good. Looks a really nice lake. Biggest volcanic lake in the world. So, there we go. More on that later. As you saw in our video yesterday, we made it to Lake Toba after a marathon nine and a half hour car trip, but it, the destination was so worth it. it. Took us about half an hour to get across on the ferry, and this morning when we woke up, we were greeted to this this view from the balcony of our room. Just beautiful. 
just beautiful. So Lake Toba is the largest volcanic lake in the world. Um, they say it was formed 70,000 years ago um, and geologists also say that it was may have been the cause for the ice age. Um, now we're on an island that is situated in the middle of that lake and um, it is connected to the mainland by a causeway. So it's all about exploring today. We're going to do it on foot and then hopefully tomorrow we'll hire a scooter so that we can go further afield. Not sure whether we will get around the whole island because it's a huge, large island, but uh, we'll just see how we go. As you can tell by our attire, we are uh, scootering today. We're up to the H's with our scooter and we thought it was quite fitting to call this one Horas. That is Baltic language for hello, greeting, welcome. And so whenever you see anybody you go Horas, Horas. And um, that's a nice thing to say. So we've got Horas today. And we've just stopped off at this amazing Batik style meeting house, I suppose you'd call it. So much um, intricate work on it. Beautiful detail. come to the tomb of the great kings. There are three kings buried here. This one here died 450 years ago. And the second king there in the big tomb <laughs> must have been pretty important. stone chair of King Sialagan and apparently this is where all the kings and high people used to sit in judgment of those that had done wrong and uh, if they were sentenced to death they used to execute them and cook them up and eat them and uh, apparently in here is the execution site as well so let's go and have a look
So day two exploring on our mighty Horace, our scooter, and we've this time we've travelled towards the southern end of this massive island. Um, I did read somewhere, and I will need to check the statistics, but it's something like 55 kilometres long and 45 kilometres wide. I'll Google that and put it down below. But you could so think that you were in the Marlborough Sounds in New Zealand. So similar. It's beautiful, eh? And across there is the mainland. So we are right at the at the tip of the um, southern end. Our time on Samasur Island is come to an end. Uh, we've been here a total of uh, four nights and we are just waiting for our ferry back to the mainland, Parapat, where we have booked a private driver and car to take us on the five hour trip through to Madan. Madan being the capital of North Sumatra. Haven't really heard very exciting things about Madan, so we're just quite happy to do a one night a stay over we've picked somewhere that's quite close to the airport so uh, it's just a quick trip there in the morning to fly back to Kuala Lumpur to carry on with our house sit looking after Molly the golden doodle so um, there's just a ferry coming through at the moment you hear them before you see them because they have very loud blaring music going as is the case in most places here on um, Samasur Island so um, We've really enjoyed staying on the island. We're 900 metres above sea level, which made the climate really nice. So it's a nice balmy 24, 25 degrees during the day. And at night it cools down nice and crisp, um, very much like New Zealand. And as you've seen in the shots previously, so much like the South Island and parts. Parts of the island remind us of Waiheke Island. Parts of it remind us of Great Barrier Island in New Zealand and um, where we went yesterday so much like Marlborough Sounds and some of the fjords so um, thoroughly enjoyed it. The people are the most friendliest people I think we've experienced so far, the Batik people, everybody is friendly and if you speak a little bit of their language they, they love it and the food has been great, can't fault it nice and cheap, cheap destination so if you're thinking of anywhere in North Sumatra definitely put this on the list as, as some of the, one of the places to come and see. So here's a shot from of our accommodation from down on the water so you have quite a few stairs to climb um, but the view was so worth it. Oh the view was beautiful loved it. So that was our room right at the top right there We're back on the mainland. We're in a little village called Parapat and this is the main hop on hop off for the ferries that go across to Samasur Island. So um, we, are, we have come over early, we're not due to leave here until midday and we're about quarter to ten in the morning so lots of markets, lots of things to have a look at and because we've only got day packs we thought we'd take this opportunity to go for a wander and have a look around Parapat before our five hour car trip. <laughs> hopefully it's quicker going the other way this time of day in the morning. And hopefully there are toilets where we're about to depart from. The bladder ain't going to last that long with two cups of coffee on board. So we've been wandering around the village of Parapat, just filling in time before our ride leaves. And um, we've also been reading the last few days about the big downturn in the tourist industry at Lake Toba and Parapat and um, Samasur Island. And Parapat is a good example of 
how the downturn in the tourist industry has affected it because everything is pretty run down, oh, really. Yeah. It's just all tired. There's hardly anybody around tourist-wise and those that are here just seem to be the ones that are coming and going off the ferries over to Samasua Island. Um, we have read that it is slowly picking up and apparently this place goes off late October and general goes off during the Chinese New Year where a lot of the Chinese tourists come in. But um, either there is just no money or there is no inclination just to maintain a lot of the places here. I mean it could be really nice. You might get a few people coming over I think in the weekend from Madan and all that. Uh, local tourists. But, yeah, yeah pretty tired. sad. The whole place is pretty tired.